Hi. I've done my setup a bit differently today. I've uh, lowered the ball to about 45 degrees and I've moved the camera. Let's see if it's any different. <coughs> I've done this view before. It's uh, it's uh, Essex marshes, marshland, round uh, Rivenhoe. I'm going to try and do it with a different sunset. So it's more of a tutorial about this. I'm not going to pay close attention to a photograph or anything. I'm just going to make up some some um, channels here. Uh, I've, I've no buildings, just just a, a, a landscape of, uh, of trees here going into blue distant trees and then this on the horizon here, some blue the distance across across the River Colne. But I want to try and do a bit of a, an invented sky uh, sunset. Uh, but I've, I've been using um, lemon yellow with um, light red for the orangey glow in the sky, but I'm going to try and do it with alizarin crimson. So my usual uh, palette, I'm going to find my cloth, my usual palette of um, lemon yellow, raw sienna, there we go, lemon yellow, raw sienna, um, alizarin crimson, Light red, ultramarine, burnt umber, Payne's grey, and burnt sienna, which is my eighth colour. You don't have to use them all. I'll just clean up the palette a little bit. The palette, if you're still hunting for them, I, I got, I got from um, the uh, the Emporium, the Emporium outlet, and they come in packs of two. They're a bit more expensive than the last one I bought, but at least I got hold of them. So, I had good service from them. They're the right size, it's about 12 inches by 8 inches. <coughs> and the paper is Fabriano. Uh, 15 inches by 11. That comes from uh, Art Discount, Grantham's. They supply this in 100 sheet packs, very economical. It's good. It's quite a smooth surface. It's good for wet in wet. It's not so good for painting straight on without wetting the paper first. Unless you, you probably need to stretch it if you did that. And I haven't bothered while we're painting wet in wet. But the weather has been very warm in London and the, the paper's been drying out a bit quick. But anyway, we'll uh, see how we go. It's, uh, it's, it's about, it's quarter to nine in the morning on a Saturday morning. So it's a little bit cooler. Been out on my bike to get the newspapers. Right, that's, that's the, the paper wetted. Um, I'm using a two inch hake. It's getting very, very uh, worn in now. It's, um, it's lost a lot of its hairs. And they're all stuck to my to my palette in, in bits that I'm coagulated with the paint you know, around here. But no matter, they're, they're not expensive, they last a long time. I've done probably 250 paintings with this one and it's still going strong. So, uh, right, let's, let's put in some, some, some raw sienna, just, just in, the, in the sky area here. Do it all over. And then I'm going to, while that's a bit wet, I'm going to use the alizarin and, and the lemon yellow and see what sort of red we get for the sky. So where that's coming into the water area here, I'll just... That's quite a good colour. Just going cauliflower in there. And we'll, we'll put a bit of a bit here, just catching underneath the clouds, or the night clouds as we call them. Don't like that, that's going a bit wrong there. Now I'll go in with the paints, with the ultramarine. 
and light red. If you can see that, I'm keeping the, fair, the paint fairly dry. So these are the the light, lightish clouds, lightish clouds. Now I want some some of the sky coming in in these marshes here. I'll paint over a little of this, but I just wanted to get some some interest in the sky. Keeping it wet, as wet as I can. <coughs> right, I'll re-clip the paper because it's uh, growing somewhat. Nice and flat. It's very strong this paper. Um, we're, I'm going to try to avoid muddiness and you get mud when you go over it too many times when it's wet with different colours and you can see that the, the painting is going cauliflowery there and it looks like it's going to go cauliflowery there doesn't it. But um, I'll uh, I'll just put in some background. I, I, I can paint, when that's dry, I can paint over that. <coughs> uh, right, um, I'm going to use um, probably primary colours for the, uh, the, the distance here. Don't want it too obvious. I want it to, to bleed. This is on the horizon here. out the loose hairs. Okay, bring out hairs from the brush all the time. And then we've got the slightly heavier blue. Mixing that with a bit of yellow. This is the distant Bit walking towards around the corner of Arsford, so just from the blue. And another more, more blue in the next bit, I think. That's right, that's. Uh, just put the bank in there. Now some raw sienna. Slightly ready. That is the uh, salt marsh coming across here, the top of it. On there. Right. This might take on a life of its own. Excuse me, we'll have a cup of tea. Now I don't mind this. It it, it, um, it happens with watercolour. And it's more to do with with um, how wet the paper is and, and how quickly it dries before you put the, the actual washes on. And I might have overdone it, but um, we'll, we'll, we'll see. We can always put a, a bit of a dark cloud over that. <coughs> right, now we'll, I'll do some more of these trees now. Still keep on the blue side. Getting more distinct. So I'm using just oh, a bit of alizarin in there. Why not? A bit of yellow, a bit of blue. Oh, 
because they've got different sort of planes of these trees. Leave some air in the uh, in the trees to let the birds go through. But no detail, just just put in these shadow areas and the lighter areas. Um, they will get warmer as you come come round this here. So a nice yellowy green. Bit of orange in there. Some darks back in there. The water and the brush. I'm only using the corner of the brush here. Darker green is now going in. Do this fairly quickly. I want to to so labour it. And then just dropping some more nice darks, darks in there. Right, now I can put in a couple of Uh, paint needs to be quite dark to be able to do that for it to show. Now, just put a bit of orangey colour. Just going a bit more green now. I'll use a bit of Payne's grey to get a bit of a darker shortcut to there. Okay, let's leave that alone for a moment and go into some of these salt marsh areas now. I, I'll, uh, I reckon I can leave that alone for the moment. I'll just put in some, some of the oh, rest of them to the paint there was just a bit too wet. Don't want a lot of detail in this, this bit here. I just want to just show the the, the marshes that um, with a bank here. Just emphasize that in there.
Now we've got a lot of grass coming around here. And we'll get some Grass coming across here. Uh, let's just get these in here. The, the, this, these are the banks of the marsh. Then we'll have a bit of uh, bits of dark to show channels. See, I've covered that up, so that uh, is okay. Now we're coming in with the, the warmer colours now. I'll come over some detail when this when we dry this off. I'm going to make this um, a, a slightly undulating by putting these these shadow areas in. Otherwise, it'd be monotonous. But you could do that very quickly with with the hake. I was watching a demonstration last night, I can't remember who it was. He was using a varnish brush, an each varnish brush, which I, I used to use a lot with oil painting. But it's, it looks like a great brush for stippling and doing lots of random stuff. It looks as if you've done a lot of work when in fact you haven't. Now I'm trying, I'm trying to keep this, this lovely and lovely and warm in here. Talk shows if there's some mud. Oh, well, that needs to dry off a little bit now. Well, we can just flick in some with my plastic card. We can just half the shows is a bit like <coughs> I quite like that. So. Right, I'll give that a, I'll give that a bit of a dry. Um, what I want to do here is is when this is dry, is just to put a bit of that pinky sky back into that. I'll show a bit of the reflection of this distant blue here and and put a bit of texture in on top of this but I don't want to do it yet because that's how you get your mud you do it at the wrong time so leave it to dry or use a hairdryer and have a have a mouthful of tea I've got it round the leg of me tripod. And I'm sorry about the shudder. Now, since I mentioned the varnish brush, I've got, I'm just looking at my hundreds of brushes here, my oil painting brushes. I just see this quite a soft, this might be, 
a bit too hard for it. But it's the same texture that was used. I can, I can stipple some stuff there. Uh, but, but before I do, let's let's just um, just a bit of clean water. Let's just just go in here. Drop in some of that pink. And then a bit, bit of blue. See what happens to that. It's just a bit of a. No, I'll leave that alone. Right, let's have a look at this stippling idea. There's a pure bristle brush. Um, I don't think it will work. If I decide to sort of break it up a little bit, it might. I just want to put a bush there with a slightly stronger colour, so let's see what happens. No, it's not going to work. It's, it's just too hard. It needs to be softer. I do have softer brushes. Uh, right, here's a... No, I'll see if I can find my varnish, but... Bear with me a moment. Uh, no, 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 I can't see it for the moment. But uh, <coughs> let's try this one. It's a Chinese brush. I, I love them using these for oil paintings because they do, with the thickness of the oil and, uh, and the paint, you can stuff these bristles in and they, they, they go all over the place and that's what we want to do with this bit of red. So we'll just show a bit of a bush coming up here. I'll put some, yeah, that's fine, not bad, is it? I'll put some, um, some branches in, in this just to show some, something going on here. Let's see, see what that's like for doing grass. Bit of water, but I'm, I've broken this. The, the sort of bristles are broken, and I'm just doing that so that. Mm. Well, it's got possibilities, isn't it? Can push it. Get to lots of little bits of grass. Right, okay, well, that doesn't look too bad. <coughs> uh, right, let's uh, put that aside and get in with the rigger. Oh, 
up with a bit of a bit of light red. These are sort of silhouetted. Let's, let's establish something going on down here, but I'm not entirely happy. It might have been better left alone, but uh, we'll we'll see. We'll see. Um, I don't want to put anything on here really. I, I could probably put some uh, figures. It's a bit hard to put figures against this dark. Dark here, but I wonder. Let's see if I can put a dark figure in. I'll use blue and red. See if it register. Let's bring me. Figures, just little figures, to just give scale to the whole thing. If they show, that is. No, I'll leave that. I'll put, I, um, I'll put some birds in instead. Sign that off. It's a, a, a sort of an experimental painting, I would say, in just improvising on a, on a theme. It's good practice, I find, painting large areas of salt marsh, sand. It's trying to make it interesting is, is the thing. Uh, but you do need something. I will, I will persevere with the figure, perhaps not there, I'll put him, put him here. Stickman. Just walking along here. There is, in reality, there's a dike along here. Well, not not big, but but it's but it's there. But I uh, I've left it out. I, I wanted to establish this area here going off into infinity um, for the distance, the other side of the, of the river with a, uh, 
with the, the bluer trees receding into the distance, it doesn't look too bad. I'll put it in a mount and we'll have a, and we'll have a look at it and see, what it, see if it uh, stands up. I won't do anything more to the sky, I'll let that go. All right, here we are. Let's get that there. Let's just get that there. Right, let's zoom in, let's see what we've got here. Just take you around the picture. So uh, there's the stippling I did. Uh, just that little bushy thing, just to to add some interest to the foreground, there are my trees going off into the blue areas with the figures, just walking around the side of the uh, the inlet, and then we're coming across to to all this area here. And now there's there's the sky, uh, the cauliflower is there, but that's all right. That, that's okay. It's a demonstration after all. So there we go. So let's just zoom out of that again, show you what it's like. There we are. Just enlarge that a bit. Okay, so, so, so there we are. That says what I wanted it to say. I, I wanted a bit of a sunset, an interesting sky, or a sky rather than just plain blue. Um, and reflected light in this uh, incoming tide, or which in the tides come in and all this marsh grass area forming the coastline and the distant side uh, of the river Colne or it could be any, any river really so there we are I hope you enjoyed that thanks for watching bye bye